So I'd like to welcome everybody to the May 2021 Planning Commission meeting of the Village of Southampton. And um, right now we are uh, hoping to be joined by other members, such as Paul Travis or uh, Ed Simeone. But in the meantime, we're going to start it. And uh, what I would propose that we uh, maybe start this meeting since uh, there has been so many changes in the in the village in the last few months with this influx of uh, new residents or people who are staying here a lot more you know where i'd like to get the take of uh, every, everyone's take on where do you think the planning commission should be heading which issues should we be uh, reviewing and uh, your thoughts on uh, on the role and the mission of the of the planning commission so if anybody wants to start, or otherwise I can stop. Mark, my, my main concern is in the uh, re retaining the historic structure of the village and the historic buildings and also the finding process. The other thing I'm concerned about is the demolition and the clear cutting of properties, um, You know, taking down everything there and cleaning the thing out completely. Um, I know we were working on this project and uh, I think, you know, we should concentrate more on that since um, we seem to see more places getting torn down the village and changing the whole total character of the village. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the town actually is doing a great job in terms of uh, historic preservation. And uh, I think they take it very seriously. In our case, I'm not so sure that uh, our board are taking it as seriously as it should be. Uh, we are a CLG, so we are, um, uh, I think it's the ARB now, right now reviewing all the, the historical structures, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so the ARB has a lot of power given the fact that we are a CLG uh, and we should, uh, we should use these powers. Yeah, but what's to stop them from tearing a building? If they tear a historic building down, they, they, they find $800 and that's it. Um, my suggestion is, is that there should be a moratorium on a property for a couple of years. No fine. They just can't do anything with the property for a couple of years. Right. Well, maybe we should put a moratorium on demolitions or at least demolitions of historic buildings. Maybe that's no. something we should consider. I think that also another possibility would be to create a subcommittee of the ARB or that would really focus on the historical uh, structures and reviewing the historical structures or anything that's potentially historical. And I think that to mix the, the, the to have that same commission review the zoning issues, the architectural design, and also the historic, historic perspective, it's, I think it's too many. It's too much and you're, you're, you're losing the focus. Because one person says one thing and then the other committee says another. And nobody really gets anything out of it. Sorry, say that again. Like something will come back to the planning board and the ARB has already done something. We got to work on her speaker. Yeah, your speaker. I couldn't hear anything she said. <laughs> uh, I think I got the gist of it, though. It's, it's, it's absolutely true that, uh, you know, between the ARB and the planning board, if decisions are made, you know, they don't. They are not really uh, done in sync. I think Eldon had that uh, suggestion to have someone coordinate uh, the various um, the approval process. Well, I think he wanted don't... a planner, right? And that was something we all discussed, and we were all in favor of. I just was that information ever relayed to uh, the elected officials, to the mayor and the trustees? No. Not formal. I don't think in a formal man on a formal way. I don't think we we uh, made any space in decisions mm. at that level. But I I think that in terms of uh, historical character of the village, which is so important, 
I think it's it's uh, it's it, I think our village should have a special, if not a committee or a, a branch of the ARB or of the planning board that specifically reviews the historical character of the buildings to be either modified or demolished, you know, and be part of the approval process from the building department. Similar to the town, to the town where, you know, they, they are not, uh, the, historic, the landmarks and historical preservation commission, you know, reviews the applications and makes a, a determination whether there, there's any objection to- uh, yeah, but the, the landmarks, uh, or, landmarks committee has no teeth. It can be waived by the property owner and the town has recognized that right, but problem. Right, but be, the Mark. town has applied to become a CLG, and once Correct. they are become a CLG, then at that point, they will have teeth. The village, right. the village is already a CLG. Okay. So we we have the power to. Uh, that's what we have the power to find, you know, and to uh, maybe impose more re restrictions. Mark, I served on the town landmarks board. We absolutely have no teeth at all to do. They could tear anything they they want down. Uh, the town would not support us as far as uh, implementing anything at the time when I was on the board. No, that's that's correct. But right now the town has applied to become a CLG, which with the with the CLG status, they will then be able to. Uh, uh, yeah, Marcus. Marcus, correct. No teeth. Right yeah, so, now you. So you're on. Yeah. Why, baby? Where are you going? So, so uh, Mark, so you're saying we're already a CLG, which that means if we had this committee, we would have teeth. So how yes. do we, um, yeah. perhaps that's a recommendation we can make to the trustees, uh, the trustee board, and and uh, get that ball moving. So that, you know, it, uh, we don't want to make, we want to make sure that our ideas and our conversations just don't end up in a cycle within us. We're all yes. speaking to one or each other. So we got to make sure we have a clear path to the elected officials. Yes. Um, but I think that's a great recommendation. Okay. I appreciate Yeah, I think so. Because it's so important. I mean, right now, the rate at which the construction and demolitions and modifications of the structures are going, you know, we are in, four, in five years, we won't recognize the village. Absolutely. I don't even You're recognize right. it. <laughs> right. So, so that's a good... Uh, so maybe uh, maybe Michael, can you we can, you can work on drafting something or recommendation to that effect? Sure. To uh, with Bob and Bob. Sure. Bob having do we have a, Do we have any templates that we've used in the past to address the board? I have not. Uh, yes. Yes, we yeah, do. Okay, so I'll follow up with you via email, and I'll get a template exactly. and I'll put something together. Uh, isn't, yes. the, um, isn't our liaison uh, Joe McLaughlin to the board? Isn't yes. Joe? Joe McLaughlin. Yes, we okay. should address it. So, we should address it to Joe, so Joe yeah, so then brings it to the board. Mike, you can email Joe at his okay. um, trustee address. Okay. And um, ask him how he would like to present it to the trustees, and then um go from there sounds good yeah but so I'll, uh, I'll begin a dialogue with joe first and then we'll figure out how to formally address the the trustees right. as a whole yes. okay that sounds good well it's a great uh, and but have bob involved since bob has a lot of experience with sure. historical structures both at the town and the village you know i think that um uh, i i one of the thoughts that I had for the planning commission was that maybe we should uh, enlarge the membership of the planning commission and create sort of subcommittees where we would be able to better advise the, the trustees on any, on any uh, regulations that would uh, come up in the village and, and maybe create some subcommittees, for example, a subcommittee on, on uh, uh, you know, with transportation, and uh, parking and, and quality of life, sort of. And then another committee on land use, and then maybe another committee, you know, have the planning commission have made up of four or five committees and also invite the public 
to participate and maybe have a theme at each of our meetings so the, pub the public can participate more. Well, you know, Mark, it says, you know, the planning commission is already a committee. Yeah, I, I agree with Lori. It's kind of dividing it into committees. I mean, I think, I think you and I spoke this afternoon. I think maybe we should, as, as a committee, commission, um, um, designate what we think our mission is and cover the issues that that you wanted, um, you know, that we want to cover and say that we as a commission are here to help the board study those issues. I mean, that's what the planning commission is already. Um, right. So, I, I, you know, a, a committee to, to be committees to be committees. Yeah. Diluting. I mean, we're already diluted because we have no power, but 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 our mission what is our mission maybe the board of trustees doesn't know what our mission is maybe we need to restate it maybe we need to encompass the things that we want to talk about and deliver that to the board and say here this is what we think is important this is what we as a commission committee want to study and and um, if you have your directional um, issues in order one two three four five then we will take that on. Yes. We also, we need an agenda for our meetings. Yes, we and, do need an agenda. <laughs> we do. And we need, yes. and we not only need an agenda, but we need some kind of uh, calendar where as to what we would, like with tangible goals with monthly timelines, where six months from now, we've t touched on parking, landmarks, environmental issues, whatever it is. But it, it, it can't be too much like what we've been inspired to talk about because we watched the TED Talk recently right. yeah right. so exactly. we, we need a little organization here uh, and then, it's exactly um, right absolutely not uh, absolutely and i think that also the role of the planning commission could be a vehicle for public involvement so i'd like i'd like to, the way i would like to see it is that that if we have a we have better agenda better calendar and then on issues that the public wants to get involved in or that's important you know that people get involved well, that's that's, the, now, that's the public. very good and that's and mark i must say that since the pandemic i mean i remember when we were meeting really you know in the in the village hall we had public participation and this whole pandemic and the virtual meetings has really curtailed all of that and i don't think it's just us that are suffering from that i think i think there are a lot of things that are suffering um, but I remember meetings where people attended. I mean, I remember the tree, remember the tree cutting people yes. they wanted to do. And then we had the North Sea Corridor and we had people come for that. Yes. And, I mean, we did have a lot of participation. This virt virtuality, if you will, has curtailed public input. And I don't think it's just us. I think it's across the board. So... I think that that's a factor that's going to be very difficult to overcome. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point, but I think that it's a it's a factor that's that's very important. And I think to involve the public more in in the decisions that we are making in terms of regulations and planning for the village is very important. Well, I think. Do you have any idea when we're when we're going to go and have meetings again? Are we ever? I mean, person-to-person um, um, -person meeting. Um, we're supposed to be opening up. I mean, I don't know, just certain capacities anyway. Um, has I mean, has uh, the mayor said anything about that? No, I haven't heard. I have not heard. Well, maybe we need to ask. <laughs> as well we as... we need to ask the question. Do we really want to involve... Uh, I don't think we, we want to take a position where, okay, the problem here right now is that we don't have the public public's input because we're so uh, disorganized at this time that perhaps yeah, we should take exactly. an opportunity, reorganize, refocus, make sure we understand our agenda, our mission statement, mission statement, and then we involve the public so that they're not a part of the disorganization. Right. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> yes, right. absolutely, and, absolutely. And, 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 and if we publish the agenda so that right. we can reach the public, so that you're exactly right, um, Mike, in your, in your procedural point. So there's a procedure here. One, two, and three. 
maybe four, right? If we build it, they will come. Not to steal that from a movie, but right now we're, <laughs> well, yes. we're, we're a little yeah. unbuilt. So, so we do our organizational, we do our, our mission, our goals, and, and I really do want to ask the question to uh, Jesse, um, when will we be meeting in person again? Does he have a plan? Yes, this I, we could make a suggestion. I think that possibly in uh, July, we should be ready to meet uh, again. Well, let's find out for sure. And then yes. um, after the re after the organization, the goals, the, the mission, the goals, and the agenda. Yes. And the, and, the, and the publishing of the agenda. Yes. And then in-person meetings. And I think we used to get some people to come. Mark, I mean, you know that. Yes. Uh, and I think it's very, absolutely, you're absolutely right. And right now in the last few meetings, we have not had a public participation. And I think it's, I think it's very important that in order for us to advise the trustees and advise the board as to where is the wind uh, blowing in terms of whatever regulations they want to implement, we should be able to test the feeling of the public and be a vehicle for them oh. to, to voice their... Uh, Joe is our liaison. Shouldn't Joe perhaps attend one of our meetings and, you know, maybe he can also advise on what our agenda is and what some of the things that the board would like to be, uh, what the trustees would like to be advised on? I, yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with having... I mean, perhaps I'm wrong. Should elected officials not be a part of our conversations? No, I think, it, I think that's a good point. I think you should bring to the board you know what they are hearing as to what they think the, the the new regulations should be well i don't know i mean to my mind um i think we should state our goals and our mission and run it by joe yeah restate and, the mission and then and rather than have him just sit in chaos <laughs> yes well i agree so I think that in the, I'd like to propose that between now and the next meeting, you know, we go and exchange emails and try to draft and clarify the goals, agendas that we want to pursue uh, in the next year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have some topics off the top of my head, especially with regards to this movie theater. I mean, there are some clear planning conversations that need to take place. Um, and I don't know if we should be steering the cart or if the uh, elected officials should be but a dialogue needs to be needs to take place and um you know we have a good opportunity yes yeah that's certainly an important project for the village yeah marcus one more thing that's always been in the back of my my mind i think the village on all their traffic signals should have left hand turning arrows and i think the village should pressure the town to do the same thing as well as the county and the state. Because you, with the traffic we've got out there now to try to make a left-hand turn, it's like playing Russian roulette. I think we've all experienced that. Yes. Yeah, I think that traffic and parking is definitely an issue that we need to address. I think that it's getting worse and worse. It, it's like, um, absolutely. Um, Mark, I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to leave the meeting, but I'll, I'll participate if you want to send around emails, okay? Okay. All right. Great. Bye. Thank you. So you feel better. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye now, Laura. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I think that, yeah, absolutely. I think it should be a uh, traffic, parking, possibly acquisition by the village of additional land for, par for additional parking. Uh, you know, that would be a... Uh, Definitely a topic that we should uh, talk about. You know, I think, um, you know, one possibility would be the, the one, the parcel that's across the street, that's at the corner of Elm Street and Hampton Road. That wooded parcel, I think that would be an ideal parcel to create uh, additional parking there. Well, we had talked about years ago, possibly making a, uh, putting a garage parking uh, on West Main Street. 
Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Well, not, not necessarily West Main Street, but uh, centralizing our parking in the downtown is not a bad idea via a garage. And then uh, perhaps we're able to take some of the on-street parking out or, or at least condense it. Well, yeah. you know, you guys, the, the problem is I... people have this idea of what garages look like in the city and they just poured concrete, ugly looking things. Down here in Florida, when they do multiple garage parkings, you think it's a regular building and they landscape it in so you don't realize it's a parking garage. Yep. I yeah, agree with him. Hey Eduardo. guys, apart, apart from the fact of the parking garage, which is not a bad idea, but I think we got plenty of parking. But we, what we don't have, we don't have signs that show people where they can park. People don't use the parking on uh, Hampton Road. They don't they use the parking behind the, uh, the movie theater. Uh, they probably don't, don't even know they're there. So there's plenty of parking as long as people know where to go. Mm -hmm. Ed, what do you think about left-hand turning arrows in the village, throughout the village and the town and the county and the state? Well, uh, the, the law says that we can make a left turn. How would they have a left turn signal help? You mean on the uh, on the lights? No, no, you're saying a, a left hand. A left no. hand. No. Now oh, you have yeah. a right hand turn. I think, I think, no, we, you have a left hand turn. Uh, if you put, start putting signals, you're going to slow down the traffic. Because right now, as long as nobody's coming from your uh, left side, you can make your right hand turn. Yeah, but we're not talking about a right. We're talking about making a oh, left, left hand. Oh, left hand. Right it's like left playing hand Russian hand. roulette. And I think about oh. North McGee. I'm sorry. I'm getting my left and right confused. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, it may not be a bad idea. And I don't yeah, think so. it would cost the village that much money to put these, these arrows in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may not be a bad idea. So right now... Yeah, right now you're fighting the traffic coming ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. From the I side. think it would help improve the traffic flow. <laughs> if if both <laughs> sides had left hand turning arrows, they would get through and then turn green for the through traffic to go through. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, another suggestion that I would make would be to try to uh, restrict truck traffic uh, on uh, on Hill Street, and that the truck traffic should only go on. Uh, on uh, Hampton Road, or on the uh, County Road 39. That, so we don't have uh, concrete trucks or, or big uh, semi-trailers semi going on Hill Street. Yeah, you don't, have, you don't have too much of that. Oh, we do. Do? I, don't, I mean, I, I, I live near Hill Street. I, I don't see too much of that. But see, no, I, I grew up here before they built County Road 39. And everything used to come down Savonic Road, go down uh, North Sea Road into the village and also come down uh, Hill Street and then out through Hampton Road. Or they would go down Meeting House Lane to, uh, to uh, um, oh, I can't think of, Old Town Road and then out to Hampton Road and out to Watermill. Right. I remember when they built County Road 39, we used to ride our bicycles down there and watch them do the construction. Yes, that's right. Oh, you are ancient. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I think I'm the oldest board member there. It used to be Moon Radium. But you're, the oldest, I, you're the I'm old, oldest man in category. Southampton. <laughs> huh? That's right. You're the oldest man in Southampton. <laughs> Not That's quite right. yet, but I think I'm getting there. <laughs> right. So uh, for Eduardo, who came a little bit late, you know, we were uh, trying to... Um, you know, redefine a little bit or clarify the mission statements and agenda of the planning commission. And uh, we, we think that, um, you know, between now and maybe next meeting, we should, uh, you know, try to uh, come up with a better structure for our meetings and with more published agendas and so on and so forth. Well, what's your take on this, Eduardo? Well, that's, that's up to the chair. I mean, we used to have that when CMAC was around. So it's up to the chair to organize that and with the assistance of the, you know, the, 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 you know who takes the minutes and whatnot. But uh, we used to have it as far as a mission statement. The mission statement was generally uh, whatever the, uh, 
trustees uh, want us to look into. Generally, we always took the cue from the trustees as to issues that needed to be uh, discussed uh, in the village. We usually did not just create our own you know, agendas as to what needed to be done. Uh, I haven't been getting too much feedback from the trustees, though, that I know of. That, that's correct. That's one of the issues that, right. So maybe see, we I, need to get together with trustees and see what they want to get right. done and then we can assist them. But I, I thought that it would be, uh, you know, we were talking about public participation and I thought that the planning commission could be a vehicle for the public to be able to voice their opinion as to the up, any upcoming uh, uh, regulations or uh, issues that, that, are, that the village is facing. You know, to try to now, and uh, what uh, Laura was saying was that possibly that, you know, we used to have a lot more public participation when we were actually meeting at Village Hall. But since we are meeting virtually like this, there may be having a decrease in yeah, public but, participation. But hopefully this meetings. is going to change. I, I would think that with everybody getting vaccinated and everything opening up in the next couple of months, that we'll start having our own meetings again. I would think so. I should hope so. As yeah, far I would as having the so. public, as far as having the public come to us with their problems and issues, I don't think we're the right forum. They need to go to the trustee meetings to do that. Then the trustees can come to us and ask for solutions. But what I was yes, saying, yes, I was, agree. I second that. Yeah, but I think that if we have, for example, meetings where we, where there's a theme at that meeting, such that whether it's parking, transportation, or another one that's more like environmental water or wastewater or not, another one that's more land use, at those meetings, the public could come and well, then comment on the proposed regulations that, well, that the village is considering. We're, we're already doing that. I mean, that's, that's what we do. We have a, an agenda. We have issues that we need to discuss. We have public participation. Uh, we also have speakers at times. So we're already, we're already doing that. That's, that's not something new. Right. I mean, if you go back to the zoning wars, we had meetings. We had 200 people there. Those are days that are gone, thank God. <laughs> right. Right. But we should uh, continue. Okay. Any other uh, ideas, you know? To, to bring up that um, yeah but uh, about getting uh, having meetings uh, in, in person uh, what's your feeling on that should we start looking into that uh, pick a date or see what, under what conditions we're willing to do that I mean we all can wear masks and I we're think, all vaccinated we should all be able to meet I think that July would be a good uh, I don't know I how think everybody so I yeah. think that July would be a good one to start if yeah, everybody agrees. So. Yeah. Like in Rotary, uh, starting on the 19th, well, we're all meeting now. Um, we, we, used to do, we were doing it mainly virtual, but that's kind of gone now. So we're you getting mean, there. 19th of May? Yeah, that's the, the, the 19th of May. Is, we're going to go back to weekly meetings and uh, everybody should be participating. <clears throat> Well, what's your feeling, Pam? I would think if all the board members should, everybody should be vaccinated at least. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what I said. We should, if we're all vaccinated and we're wearing our masks, I, I don't think there should be a problem getting together again. And that we should be wearing the mask for the public more than for ourselves if we're vaccinated. But, you know, just to... Well, I, I recall, I think the, the governor has a, a man, you can only have so many people in, in an area at a time. Those are 25 or 35 people or something like that. We never have that many people at our meeting, so I think it would work. <laughs> yes. So, Pam, did you... No, the, the mic. I think you're muted, Pam. We can't hear you. I think so. We can, we can barely hear you. Now Are you're you, muted. <laughs> yeah, now you're muted. There now you go. it's good. Increase uh, the volume. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. No. We can't hear. Uh, you can't, early, you can't read lips, Pam. Earlier, don't, though. Don't feel, Pam. <laughs> I got so frustrated with mine, I was ready to take a hammer to it. 
Uh, before the meeting, Pam was expressing that it's very hard for her. She would appreciate meeting in, in person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think she needs a new mic in the meantime. Yeah. Do, I mean, if the board is thinking that maybe we could do it in June, or, or do you think we should wait till July? Are, are we all vaccinated? I, I know I am. I am. I am. So let's do it. Let's do it. So let's do it in June. And it, I, I would. Uh, are we allowed to make this call? Well, we can certainly uh, look into it and propose it if we all agree that maybe, uh, so if we go into uh, the first Thursday of June, we'd be June 3rd. Yeah, and so I, we, we have to ask the, you know, the, the trustees, village, you know, trustees or whoever, or the, to be. Those, or the, you know, the uh, administrator. Um, right and see what they think uh, and give us a date. But I mean, I think it's time that we start looking into that. Right. I, I okay. think possibly maybe July would be, you know. July's fine. Yeah. You want to do July instead of yeah, June? Yeah, July's fine. Yeah, let's give it extra time. July's fine. So do more, one more meeting like this and we'll have it. And then we'll, by that time, we yeah, should this, have this, a, this is where you have a time to check with the administrator and and discuss it and set a date that we can start. And next meeting, we can you know, finalize it. Yes. OK, perfect. And then I, I think to streamline also the process that when we make a resolution, you know, how does it get presented to the trustees and so on and so forth? You know, make it more formal. All right. So I don't know if there is anything else that uh, we should touch upon. I think that uh, Bob touched upon the, you know, the historical, uh, the enforcement of uh, our uh, regulation in terms of historical structures. And I think that's certainly something that needs to be uh, addressed. What, what I'm concerned about is an $800 fine is pocket change. When a building houses for three and four million, well, five and six million dollars, put it that way. Right. Um, the, the fine should be maybe not monetary, but a moratorium where they can't do anything that property for so many years. That would be more of an impact. Uh, I think you'd be sued like crazy. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, think you, I don't think you can do that. That's depriving people of their rights and property. You can't do that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, but, but, yeah but if you had to stop going down a historic tr structure, Ed. <laughs> you have a moratorium? To I don't know. I don't know about... But, I don't like the moratorium. We already went through moratoriums. <laughs> well, uh, it's it's not would be be it'd be a fine, but you'd have to look into legally wise. The the, uh, the village attorney would have to look into it. Right. But instead of a fine, it's even a ten thousand dollar fine is pocket change to them. That uh, you got to admit that. No, but I think that as a CLG though, if we have a proper committee and we object to a demolition or object to a modification to a historical structure, we can impede the issuance of a building permit being a CLG. We could say that as part of their, we could ask to modify the building permit application to make sure that they get a proper sign off from a proper authority that has reviewed the historical value of the property. You know, so, and, uh, yeah, my, my, my concern is somebody just goes ahead and tears the building down and just kind of thumbs his nose at the village. Oh, well, we can up the fine. Yeah, we can up the you fine. Know, there's, there's, there are other things we can do. Yeah, but the, with you, you're talking about millions of dollars they're getting for these houses. I mean, what do you, what do you set the value with the fine? I well, maybe there's could, could maybe the it. value of the house. house. They have to rebuild um, the old house. That would affect them more. Down. That's right. We don't have to put a moratorium on them. What we could do is that they have to rectify. Otherwise, they, they we, uh, what's the term? Mark, you'd be aware of it. When at the town level, the chief building inspector flags your property and pulls a CO. Isn't there a term for that? Oh, but we pull their CO mm. and, and we give them yeah. oh, a stop work order. Yeah, he, he should so just stop. moratorium. Yeah, they just he can't just do stop. anything. Exactly. You should just stop work order, right? Which I'm sure they, I guess they could do yeah. rather than find them. I don't know what, maybe this is something we can have our building inspector come and speak to us on. So we're, we're coming from at least an informed perspective on it. Right. I think that would be a good idea. Ask Chris what he, he would think. 
And, and then how do we fix it? Right. Yes. And also, you know, have some mitigation in terms of if, the, if something was done to a structure, there has to be some mitigation. Maybe either they, that they restore something else or that they, you know, there may be a vehicle for, uh, to, to resolve the issue through mitigation. So the, um, and, uh, okay, well, we have- to, uh, to change the subject, what happened to the sewer? We don't talk sewer anymore. No, I know. The, the sewer has, um, you know- uh, That was I, the most important thing a year ago that we were gonna tackle and get done and go forward it, with it and, and resolve it and get started. I haven't there's heard sewer no, There's no months. grant money. <laughs> I, I think the sewer, I, yeah, I mean, my recommendations would be that in, for the sewer that, you know, it should be a, an effort that the village is one component, but I don't think that the village should develop necessarily their own sewage treatment plant. I think it, it, uh, there's a need for a sewage treatment plant in, in the greater area. And then we uh, could then we could connect to it. So that's why, the, for example, we had that parcels next to the cemetery there that could service a much larger area. And the village business district would be one of the component feeding into that plant. But it should be a, a project done with the county, with the town, and uh, and with the village. I, I mean, I disagree. It's, we're, we're, we have a village center, a downtown area, and we have high density residential neighborhoods. So to, to lump in north of County Road 39, where the density decreases dramatically very quickly. I mean, we're also now perhaps upping the cost while we might have the bidding of the town. We can't always just rely on the town to solve our problems. Like for instance, right. the example of let's make sure that no trucks can drive through the village, but they have to drive through the town. So I, like we got to take responsibility here. Sag Harbor has a sewer district. West Hampton applied for a grant is building one. Why? Why not us? Yeah. What, what are I we agree. so afraid of? Because yeah. because we don't have the space for the the sewage treatment plant. We might See, have the space. West, a West, no, no. West Hampton had the plant. They had a plant at at the airport. The uh, Sag Harbor had a plant like years and years ago, right by the water. So it's the village. The 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 definition and the development of a sewer district starts with the plant. And we don't have a location for the plant. You know, and, Mark, we, we do have a location. The, the hospital still has a sewer treatment plant. And I've often wondered, could that plant be expanded? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's the no. appropriate location. I, 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 I well, there's, sea level, the there's, there's sea level rise issues with the hospital, perhaps. But we there is the, the uh, concern for independent living located. The full gospel church, while a portion of it is in the town, a small portion is in the village. Uh, that could be also, and while I know there is... Where a, is that? Which one? That's 120-something uh, Sabonic. It's across from... It's right where the Full Gospel Church is, right on Cairo. Oh, yes, that's a great location also. Yeah, and... So, so it's a fantastic it, location. Yes, the town board's currently considering a change of zone application yes. for a, affordable housing, but it's a yes. discretionary act, so that may or may not happen. And this could be an alternative to the town board. Exactly. Um, so but if, that, if, they were, if they were to, for example... That would be a fantastic location for a plant. So if the town moves with the rezoning of that parcel and they will develop a sewage treatment plant, then at mm -hmm. that point we could participate in having them make a slightly larger sewage treatment plant. And then we would then just pump the, the, the wastewater to that location. And it's I mean, a that's great, a, great location. A, well, there's a lot of contingencies there. First, the town board has to approve the project which that is still uncertain. So assuming that they don't, it's, there's no reason why we couldn't pursue it uh, on our own accord. Um, and in fact, we could pursue it on our own accord regardless, because again, it's a discretionary act. The town board has the, the option to say yes or no to this at any point in the process. But it's a perfect Mark, location there's, because- there's, there's a little problem with that. The Suffolk County Water Authority has a well field within a certain distance of that. When they well, built that, the that could be a problem. <laughs> rehab center, that wealth, that sewer treatment plant had to be out of that well field district. Right. And if you put the sewer treatment plant in closer, you're going to be into that well field district. And I don't well, think the, you're going to get the approval from the water authority. The, the only thing is, 
they have a so they, their current proposal has an STP, but it's smaller, obviously. But they're being it's being considered, and uh, Suffolk County, uh, I guess it's Water Authority or no, it's yes, the um, Suffolk County, Suffolk County yes. Water Authority. They yes. I don't they have not mentioned that yet, but perhaps they will. I, I don't know, but it's just something that perhaps we should be speaking to our elected officials about and asking them to be to be thinking about because right. it, it could be viable. It's yes, a, a could be. I but don't the, know. The effluent, right the effluent could be. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a cemetery across the street, so it's. Um, yeah, but cemeteries. Know. So, from my understanding of getting anything on a cemetery, you're dealing with like archaic New York State laws that typically are sh- quite strange when it comes to cemeteries. <laughs> I don't entirely understand it, but I've been. In, that's what I've been informed of. So I don't know if we should be counting on the on the cemetery. Yeah. That's just my two cents. But again, I, maybe again, I think there's been a disconnect between us and, and the agenda of the elected officials. So maybe there's a way we can either get them here or at least make sure we're acting on their direction. And so that and we're also working with the most up to date information because I don't think we are. Yeah, correct. Yes. And I think that personally, I think that if we, if we move with the sewer district, I think that we should also make sure that the zoning is in place to, um, because wherever you add the sewer, typically development starts to to spring up like. So we have, I mean, we have the- uh, We do. I mean, we did the zoning in the village 10 years ago. We did it on purpose. Yes. In order to protect the village when the sewer went up. So we already have everything in place. We have a wonderful plan. I think it's a, I agree with you that it's a wonderful plan, but maybe it could be looked at, you know, now that you some can look at it all you want. But we had uh, 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 <laughs> Ernst uh, Einstein. I mean, we we, we spent uh, like three years on it and if we put it all together. I mean, it's it's a plan that works. Definitely works with CMAC leading the, the charge in that. It's a wonderful plan. So you can look at it, but I don't think you need to do anything to it. What we need to do is get the sewer going. Right. No, I understand, but I think that in the plan, we want to make sure that there are no loopholes. There, no loop uh, there are no loopholes. I, I would make sure. Yeah, there really are no loopholes. It was pretty specific as to the distances and the heights and, and, the, you know, and, and the parking and everything else. Very specific. So. Okay. Well, maybe we should review it as a committee. Yes. So we're I mean, all that, on the same team. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Sure. Because I, I understand Eduardo's position, and I think it's he absolutely is right. But sometime now, given the the you know the potential developments that's, and that's I, I would new, put I, I would put our energy in getting the sewer going, and yes. you can you know you can look at the other thing, but the sewer is what you want to put your energy in. I don't want to see six months just trying to review the master plan, the the, the village center zoning. Instead of getting the uh, sewer going, let's get the sewer going. Then, you know, on a time off, we can look at the uh, uh, the zoning and the. I mean, we spent three years on that. Spent a lot of money on it. It's a good plan. Then we can swim in Agawam Lake. And then that's another one that we got to really work on. <laughs> right. Yeah, Agawam Lake. I mean, uh, I know there's a water committee. I thought and we're, we're putting we're putting band aids on Agawam. Like now we got these things in the water there. I mean, it's a oh, band sewer. It's all connected. The sewer will definitely play right. a role. But, oh, the but, sewer definitely helps it. Yeah. But Agawam Lake, I mean, it needs to be dredged. I think that's the. <coughs> to me, the dredging of the Agawam Lake is is a must. Yeah, well, I hope that's. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I hope that we don't have to go that far, but whatever it takes. You, you're gonna have to do it, Ed, because it's been um, many, many years of all of pesticides, fertilizers, everything. You didn't grow up in this community and see all that stuff coming down Windmill Lane, across County Road 39. Uh, all the farmers feel that water would be brown. It'd yeah. be coming down White Street, Hill Street, and all that fertilizer and mm-hmm. pesticides went into Lake Agawam. And I think it's about six feet of that stuff in Lake Agawam. Exactly. Crazy, and- a crazy idea. I was I thinking. You, of, I was actually thinking no about. No matter what today. you do on the outside, that stuff is still going to keep releasing. You have to get that no, stuff out of the lake. I exactly. I was, I was in uh, San Francisco, 
and uh, there's an army uh, army base uh, that was turned into a park. They had a lake just like we have Lake Agawam. I contacted the director. They had to dredge that lake, remove all the spaces, uh, plants and stuff around it, and protect the lake from any outside sources from coming into it. But they had to dredge the lake. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that we should go do an RFP for dredging of the lake, set up a certain quantity, so many cubic yards of dredging, and, and, and go for it. And then and once we have the bids, we'll get the funds to do it. But nothing can be done to clean up Lake Aguam unless you dredge. Yeah, you know, we, we already discussed the dredging. There were a lot of uh, obstacles to it. One was even where to put all the slides. But I had, I had a crazy idea today. <laughs> Uh, because uh, well, we're talking about sewage plants and sewage plants, you know, they, they take away also the nitrogen in the water and whatnot. Um, uh, could we put a, a mini sewage plant next to the lake and have it suck out the water, clarify, clean it, and then put it back in? And no, over but, time, maybe it'll clean up the lake. I think that's no. a crazy idea. Yeah, it is a crazy, crazy idea. I want to just hear what you think of it. How well, crazy it, it it's, we, at what point do we want this lake to be a, a lake that has uh, other species in it besides, uh, I don't even know what's living in there at this point. Ducks but and carp. My point, my, my, my point being, we want it to be a, a lake that has a healthy ecosystem and, and functions on its own without us augmenting it with tens of millions of dollars. It's out of balance. So we, we, yeah. we need to... The corrections that we need to pursue will put it back in balance, so it restores itself, and then in the you know moving forward. So I, I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of your crazy idea, but I like some okay, of your other ideas. Okay, so you know you gotta you gotta propose crazy ideas sometimes. Sometimes yeah. they work out. But, uh, yeah, yeah, listen to my moratorium ideas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, I think we've, we've covered a lot of material, and. Uh, you know, so so let's stay in touch in the next month, and let's try to uh, redirect and uh, give more of a directions to the to the planning commission. Set up an agenda for next month and for the next few months. So that sounds yeah. like a plan. All right. So if I don't, but what uh, happened to Eldon, by the way? Eldon, I believe, uh, had a, he took on a position that uh, where he's not he's not allowed to be on a public board. You're kidding. Conflict of interest. No kidding. Or, so now you're the chair? Stuff. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> okay. This was news to me. I hadn't, nobody told me that. All right, right, right. right. He's been acting right. as our chair and doing a wonderful job. I think, I think we need a little more direction from our elected officials. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I'll, the, I'll write Joe regarding the landmarks uh, topic. And then perhaps we can have some a formal, uh, a formal memorandum written for them. I don't know the format that we typically use to address the village board, um, the village trustees. But yes. moving forward, we should have Joe maybe perhaps here, and we should get an idea of what Jesse and the other trustees are looking to accomplish. Yes. Um, for this year, now that COVID's kind of slowing down. Exactly. I apologize for the construction in the background. Exactly. So, we'll, and, and then we'll pencil it in that we should meet, that we, we will meet again in person in July. Sounds good. That's good. So we'll have one more yeah. meeting, one more virtual meeting, and then in July we'll meet. Okay. Okay, very good. Well, I want to thank you, everybody, for your participation, you. all, your, all your ideas. Appreciate it very much. Even the crazy ones. Even the crazy yeah, ones. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Sewage treatment plant on the park. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, it's crazy, but maybe not so crazy. Right. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you so much, and we'll see Have you next time. Have a good bye -bye. night. Thank you. Bye guys. bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. bye.